watching The Perfect Match on Netflix. It's giving Love Island but hornier. So during Black Women's Coretta Scott King's month, Dom, a young black man, comes in and immediately professes his loyalty to Francesca. And his loyalty to Francesca is so strong. I'm talking about Mike Tyson bite your ear off strong. Savannah approaches him, expressing her interest. Francesca is able to tell him, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. And like the loyal dog that he is to Francesca, he stops talking to Savannah. She then uses Dom to win the next couple's challenge and then convinces Dom that for the greater good, she should go on a date with Damien, the white man that she wants. And now you got Dom's black ass crying over white women's during Black History Month. Chanel. Now when I um recorded that intro, it was still Black Women's um Harriet Tubman month. But now it is International Black Women's Michelle Obama History Month. So just keeping that in mind, I did record that in February. We are now in March. Um and I'm sorry it took me so long to get to this video because I just be busy. Life be kicking my ass. Okay? Life is kicking in a good way life is kicking my ass in a good way um i'm not complaining but baby life is kicking my ass um but yeah so let's talk about i really want to talk about mostly the black cast members of the perfect match on netflix but also you know i'll sprinkle a little bit in there of my thoughts about everybody in general but i want to start up i want to start off talking about dom right dom was so interesting to me because Dom, when you, when he's introduced, he's introduced as such a soft black man. Obviously he's strong, he's good looking, you know, he seems to have a really good personality and his personality, like the soft side, the gentle side, like the, his gentle giantness was brought out a lot until he started having, until he started having interactions with black women or women that were not white. For instance, like Savannah, you know what I mean? It just was really, really weird to me. So first let's start off with Dom crying over Francesca, you know, during the taping of this show. Somebody really has to explain to me, besides this white woman having African slash ethnic features that she bought, what is special about this girl? Like, somebody has to explain that to me. Now, I'm not trying to... Well, shit, I did just insult her. But shit, rightfully so during Black Women's History Month, bitch, you was making... You were making non-white women um, and look very aggressive for no reason. I hated the way that she came at Savannah for doing what she was doing, which is Francesca's in this house and she's playing the game. Savannah was doing the same thing. She's talking to everyone. You know what I mean? Just because you have your eyes on Dom doesn't mean that Savannah can't have her eyes on him either. And baby, Savannah read the, the fuck out of Francesca when Francesca was basically like trying to tell her, especially when like Georgina came in the house. Yeah, uh, we're about to make, you know, your experience in the house, you know, a living hell. Like we're about to make things hard for you. And Savannah was like, bring it on, bitch. She was like, first of all, so you can talk to somebody and I can't just cause you dating, just cause you're talking to Dom doesn't mean that I can't. We're in a house. It's called the perfect match. I'm trying to find my perfect match. Just like you are whitey. So why the fuck can't I do what you're doing? It just really gave racism the way Francesca was able to tell Dom not to talk to her. Like, it just, is it me or it just really gave racism? I feel like, you know, Savannah was the only Asian or the only other minority in the house other than the black women. And the way she was shoot off and made out to be aggressive and problematic when she wasn't. I mean, us as the viewers, we could see it. But the way like Francesca was able to steer that ship and make her out to be like a villain when she wasn't, it just was really, really weird. Um, but Dom was sitting there crying over Francesca. And I'm just like, Dom, you actually came from another show called The Mole where it's a game. Now you're on the perfect match. It is a game. Why are you crying and saying that you're in love with this girl that you just met two days ago? What do you love about her? 
Like, one thing I, I can appreciate about Francesca is she played the fuck out of the game. But even, like, there were moments, like, in the show where, like, like, for instance, like, when she was able to um, trick Dom into letting her go on a date with her actual preference, which will bring me to another point. But even when she was with Damien's ugly ass, like, she was like, Damien was like, I love you. I want to be with you. And she was like, for what? What do you, we don't, we don't talk about anything. We don't have any, like, substantial conversations. We don't have any conversations that are important. We don't discuss anything, really. But, you know what I mean? And mind you, this is a girl who was on the show and her highlight of her personality was basically giving a story about how she took a tampon out of another girl's pussy with her teeth and it was like so fascinating to everybody i'm just like let a black girl has said that shit like what it just was really really fucking weird just their obsession with this girl which leads me to say honestly it's either y'all niggas was crazy or that part of the show was heavily produced because it just was weird how everybody was it was it was weird how Francesca was never in danger of leaving and she treated everybody like shit, but she was never in danger of leaving because all the men wanted to fuck her. It just was really, really real. But anyway, so Dom crying over white women's during black Coretta Scott King's month. And she turns around and she goes for her actual preference. And that's what I want to talk about when it comes to Dom. And then I'll move on to the black women. But I want to talk about this with Dom and even with Zay. Remember when uh, Annie comes into the house, beautiful black girl, everybody paid her dust, right? And by default, she paired up with Zay, but she wasn't Zay's preference. And if you watch Zay, Zay was on, what, what show was it before? I think there's a, there was another Netflix show. It wasn't put a ring on it, but it was the ultimatum, right? Zay's preference is his girlfriend on the show was multiracial. So his preference is either you're multiracial, you're biracial, or you're just not black at all. And so it was crazy watching him pay Annie dust. And he, he just had this attitude, like he was going to come into the house and girls were going to fawn over him. And it's like, baby, let me tell you something. Your preferences don't prefer you. It was really, really entertaining watching like these men's preferences play in their fucking faces. Like, Y'all will sit there and weaponize black women's blackness and then just to go be with your preferences. But guess what? Your preferences actually are able to weaponize your blackness as well and show you that they don't want to be with you. Like you're not a preference for us. If we are with you, we're looking for something specific. And I feel like when you look at Dom and when you look at Zay, that was so apparent. For instance, Obviously, with Fran, she left you for the white man that she really would, really wanted to be with. Um, but then you see Dom move on to Georgina. or Is it Georgina or Georgia? So he's all of a sudden now he's professing his love for Georgia. They're the perfect couple now. And, and like he's not even giving any other black woman a chance. Like later on in the show, we see Colony come in. Perfect match on Netflix. Is it me or they're casting men who specifically don't want black women? Dom is still off in the corner crying over white women during Martin Luther King month. What I need, like, of all people. Oh my gosh, shut your ass up. Stand up. The ancestors are weeping. Are you not embarrassed? Let's talk about the black women. Colony comes into the house. Do y'all see how fine this girl is? She's finer than frog hair. Dom goes on a date with Colony. Soon as Dom saw that there was a black woman waiting for his ass down to the beach, baby, he put his no colors allowed sign up quick. I'm sorry, baby, I don't do black women. <laughs> you a strong black woman. I see you. Did y'all catch his whole cold switch? Cause I had never seen him talk to the white women like this. When he with the white women, he crying. I'm Sophie, literally the most beautiful girl to walk in the house. They paid her dust. She matches with Chase. Chase who was about to get kicked out of the house. She saves him. What does he do? He goes for somebody with pink toes. That's right, he got himself a white woman. During Martin Luther King month. We really have to talk about Colony's entrance into the house because her entrance came into the house Colony's entrance into the house came right after the whole Dom and Francesca debacle, right? And so now he was being given a chance to go and find someone new. And he was so excited to go on this date. He's like, you know what? I'm going to have a good attitude. I'm going to go on this date. And it was like almost immediately as soon as he saw it was a black women's, his whole demeanor changed. It was like, girl, like he literally told her, you know, anyway, 
I got my pink toes back at the house, baby. <laughs> you, this ain't gonna work, but you know what? You a black woman. You a black, strong black. You a strong black woman. You a strong black woman, right? Yeah, I see you strong black woman. It was crazy how he told Connie, I wouldn't mind being a house husband. Bitch, you wasn't saying that to the white women. To the white women in the house, you were being their protector. You were being their shield. As soon as you got to the black woman, it was, I could be your house husband. You st strong black women. I could be your house husband. You're a Martin Luther King. Like, the way he saw this girl. And mind you, he was doing all that. Why? Just because the girl got a job. Like, you, when you really start to dissect that shit, it's like, wow, oh my God. You're weaponizing this girl's blackness. And you're using the fact that she's got a job. Unlike the rest of these white bitches in the motherfucking house. I don't know what the fuck they do. But you're using the fact that she's got a job. The bitch got shit to do. She wakes up in the morning. She got emails. She got an office to go into. She pays rent or mortgage. She got a car note. Oh my God. She's a black woman. Like literally, did you guys not see how when she got into the house, it was like he was warning every man. She's a black woman. She's a black woman. That's a black woman right there. That's a strong black woman. That's a strong black woman. That's a strong black woman. It was like, God damn. It was such a turnoff. To even, I think at the time, Zay was gone because his preferences didn't prefer him. So then you had Barista in there, which, oh my God, who the fuck, why the fuck was he even an option for these women's? Why the fuck was Bart Simpson even in this motherfucking house? But anyway, um, he was like, he literally turned everybody away from her. And weaponize her. This is like Dom, the way Dom, the way these black men, period, treated black women on this show really should be a case study. And besides the points that I've already brought up, but this is a perfect example of what black women's beef is with black men who date outside their race. We don't care that you date outside your race. Just leave us the fuck alone. Don't weaponize me for being a black woman with a job. Don't weaponize me for being a black woman with an education. Don't weaponize me for being a black woman with standards. Go date your snow bunny. Like, I don't give a fuck, but just leave me out of it. When black women go and they date someone outside the black race, you don't hear us weaponizing black men, like, in order to do so. We just go out. We don't do that. We just go outside, we find somebody with pink fingers, and we mind our fucking business. Damn. But y'all niggas never seem to give us that fucking courtesy. That's literally the entire issue. And then there are the black men that were in the house who literally rode black women's coattails into the house and then left them out to dry. For instance, like Chase. Chase wouldn't even be in the house as long as he was if it wasn't for Annie, which Annie made a, t Annie, you made a mistake by not dating, uh, what was that other black boy's name? I can't remember his name, but he was cute. He was cute and he was cool, but I think Annie was trying to play the game. I think because she saw it was a competition, she probably felt like, okay, Chase is a big guy. There's going to be competition here. So let me pick him. But I don't think she understood like what to expect, that there were going to be challenges that didn't just require strength. You know what I mean? It required compatibility. And so that was a misstep. But even with Chase, Chase was so, like, he acted as if he liked her only to just be like, yeah, girl, nah, I'm going to go after these white women. And mind you, again, for in Chase's case, these white women, your preferences did not prefer you. Like, even down to, like, the reunion, like, all the white women, like, they were fucking dragging your ass. <laughs> like... And honestly, like, it was a pleasure to see because the ancestors did not forget, okay? It was well-deserved to see you get dragged because what you did to Annie, it came back to bite you literally the next episode. Literally the next go-round, you were out of the house. Okay? Um, who else? Um, I was actually really happy to see Diamond come into the house, but again, she was set up on a date with Dom. And Dom gave her the same blurt. <laughs> The same, you a strong black woman, you a strong woman. Same speech, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 
I got, you know, I got my, you know, I got my salmonella back at the house. You know what I'm saying? I don't do fried chicken. I do unseasoned meat. <laughs> it's back at the house waiting on me. Um, but you know what? I got your back when you get in the house though. And literally when she got in the house, I took notice again to how Dom would treat her versus how he was treating the non-black women. It was always caressing like did you guys see how if Inez felt a certain way he, he was ready to hug on her he was ready to support her same thing with, with Georgia but he never ever ever did that for the black women in the house now um I believe that so Diamond gets in the house and I think she paired up with oh my gosh she paired hold on wait a minute she paired up with Baby, what was that white man's name? He is so damn fine. Lord have mercy. He's so damn fine. Where is he at? Lord. Oh my God. She paired up with Will. Now let me tell you something. This right here, this right here is my type of white. Okay? This right here is my type of white. Will looks like he uses washcloths. That's a white man that knows how to wash his legs. Mm -hmm. Will looks like he has a cabinet full of seasoning. Okay? Adobo. Goya, Madam Gugus, Epis. That's a white man who knows Lil Guzzi's verse on white men. Okay. I pull up at the club VIP, no gas in the tank, but all drink some me. Wipe me down. Yes. He look like he know that verse word for word. So again, if you're trying to put me down with some white meat, sell him black. Sell him out. You know, typically I don't do pink penis. Okay. Well, he white, so he got a cock. So typically, I don't do pink cock. But baby, if anybody out there want to hook me up with a white man, so I was excited to see Diamond get with him. I was like, okay, bitch, yes, I am feeling this swirl. This is a swirl I did not know I needed to see. Um, but Will was too competitive, child. Will was trying to win this money by any means necessary. He wanted that money so bad. Um, so I was sad to not see that pan out. And I think she went on a date with Barista after he was kicked out the house. She goes on a date. She brings him back in. Of course, he goes for a non-black woman. It just was weird. I think that a lot of girls, like how it was set up in the house to um, Barista, it's just, let, can we be honest? This man is not fine. This man is not good looking. Now, you know, I'm not the finest girl in the world, okay? Maybe I'm not qualified, but this man is not good looking at all. What is this haircut? What is this haircut? This man is stuck in 1992. What in the kid and play? What in the Bart Simpson? What in we're the Simpson? What the fuck is going on? Please make like Elsa and let it go. Uh, Barista, I think the girls was giving him way too much. I think he did end up with a black girl at the end. I think maybe she's biracial. But yeah, I think maybe she's biracial. So, mm. But I didn't like her experience in the house either. I felt like people just treated her like a sexual object. I, I didn't get that. I didn't get her storyline either. But anyway. Y'all, um, what did y'all think about the perfect match? I, I really think... <laughs> I think the show was a fucking mess. I think the show was a fucking mess. And I really don't have much positive things to say about it. Um, other than I really just didn't like how it, it really just felt like there was an agenda here to make black women look undesirable. And so as I was looking through the internet, I saw that so many girls were having, so many black girls were having the same sentiments. And I came across this woman's post her name is dana she's act actually a casting director who i believe either helped cast this show or has helped other shows be casted with netflix or other dating shows on other networks um i found this letter from her and i want to read it to you perfect match on netflix now i've been very vocal about the fact that i do not like the way black women have been depicted on the perfect match during black history harriet tubman month i've been very vocal about that shit. so 
I came across this letter. I hope I'm saying her name right. This is an open letter from Dana Asadi. She is a casting director and she is a television series developer. Girl, I need to talk to you, girl. I got a couple, I got a couple ideas, girl. I need to talk to your ass. She wrote this open letter to The Perfect Match. An open letter about the racist and harmful narratives of The Perfect Match on Netflix and the industry as a whole. She writes this. Watching The Perfect Match as a person of color is upsetting, disappointing, and straight up cringeworthy. Turn it off at episode six, where so far, eight cast members left the house for being deemed the least desirable. Out of the eight, seven were by pick, which means six of them were black. All of them women eliminated are black, except for one who is the only one of Asian representation on reality television, let alone dating shows. But wait, the simple math of discrimination doesn't end here. There are seven white cast members still present in the house. The other few, except for one, are mixed with white. Let me remind you that we're watching this on Black History Month. Okay? And I could go on and dive even deeper into why the show perpetrates harmful narratives regarding race other than because of who left so far, but I'll save it for another time. She ends her letter by saying this, the people who worked on the show are the ones responsible. Out of touch producers sprinkling in a few biopic cast members just to call it a diverse show is lazy at best. It takes more to truly be inclusive and not cause underrepresented groups more harm. And they might want to convince you that it's just the way things went down and they had no control over it. But anyone who ever worked a reality show knows that that is just complete Excuse my French. Bullshit. Do better. I know that's right, Dana. I know that's right, Miss Asadi. You better take a stand. You better take a stand during Harriet Tubman month. That's right. I know that's right. Go ahead and share her letter. Tag Netflix. Tag the perfect match. Um, she even tagged the production company, uh, Kinetic Content. Tag Kinetic. Let them know. Yo, we're watching this. We see y'all for y'all truths, okay? We see that this is a scheme that Todd set up to, to disrespect black women during Coretta Scott King's month, and we are not going to have it. Until you do right by black women, everything you do will fail. That letter is still up. Uh, please make sure that you share it. Make sure that you share it. Make sure that you follow her. Um, her and I had a deeper conversation in our DMs, which <laughs> she really was able to shed light on a lot, not just with this show, but just with a lot of the Netflix shows, period. Um, these reality shows. You know, one thing she shared with me was, um, this last season of The Circle. She said that if you notice, there was not a lot of promotion for the last season of The Circle. And that was because that was the first The Circle season that had a predominantly minority filled cast and so they received a lower promotional budget netflix come on now come on like y'all are literally the leader of the pack i one day want to be on netflix like i want to host a dating show on netflix i want to host something on netflix i would hate to be a part of an experience like this and not see people that look like me. And even if it's not, it's not even just about me, it's just as a black woman, I just really hope that you guys understand the narrative that you guys are pushing. And not just Netflix, but a lot of these dating shows out here, a lot of these reality shows, you're pushing a narrative that is really harmful to black women. It just is. It's very, very harmful to black women. You know, as black women, we're at the bottom of this totem pole. Let's just be real. As accomplished as we are, as much as we make the world turn, we are still at the bottom of the totem pole. And for a lot of different facades in life, a lot of different, um, in a lot of avenues in this life, we are at the bottom. This doesn't help our cause. We don't deserve that. We don't deserve that. We make shit shake. If you look up your tweets, if you look up your engagement when it comes to the shows that you guys are putting out, it is mostly black women pushing those narratives. It is mostly black women putting y'all out there. We don't deserve this. We deserve better. Do better by us, please. Like seriously, do better by us. This is disgusting. Um, I really feel like this show was heavily, heavily produced to make us look unwanted. And also, you know, Savannah, she's not black, 
but she read like a black woman though. But even like as an Asian woman, you know, as other minorities, like we don't deserve to be tossed aside like that at all. And when you guys drive these narratives, please understand that those narratives leak into reality. They leak into everyday lives, our everyday lives. They push forward very dangerous narratives for us. And we have to pay the consequences, not you. Lastly, but surely, were y'all here for Dom and Georgia winning over Joey and uh, Carousel? That made no sense to me, which is again why I really feel this was heavily produced. It made no sense. Them people was in love since day one. Like never had any uncertainty um, as far as recoupling went. Um, they freaking got engaged for goodness sake and they lose and Dom won with Georgia. And then I don't know if you guys have followed the fallout of everything, but basically Georgia never wanted Dom to begin with. Georgia began dating somebody else after the show. You know what I mean? Then she went on a podcast and tried to like flip the narrative, but Dom came out and said, no, no, she was, she's been dating. She went to Coachella with another guy. Like she's been out in the streets. Like she didn't really want me. I stopped following her on socials and I'm speaking out about it now because I fulfilled my contract and I can tell you guys the truth. We were never together. So again, so your preference, the white women that you was on television crying for, didn't prefer you. How embarrassing. And he really comes across as a nice guy, but I'm gonna always drag you because you weaponized Every black woman that came into the house, you weaponized their blackness in order to be favorable with these white women. So it's forever fuck you. <laughs> Wish you the best, but fuck you. Um, all right, y'all. Let me know what you guys thought about the perfect match. Um, y'all, I've been watching Love Island UK. And I really want to talk about Tanya, Shaq, and Martin. Please let me know if y'all want me to talk about that. I was going to record a video, but I wanted to ask you guys first. Do you guys want me to talk about that? Because, girl, I cannot keep... Tanya, I cannot keep defending you and your wig. Girl. Girl. Not during Black Women's Jada Pinkett History Month. I'm sorry. Um, drop in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on Perfect Match. Um, subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.